Welcome to Advance with MUSE Health. I'm your host, Erin Spain. This show's mission is to help you find ways to preserve and optimize your health and get the care you need to live well. The MUSC Health Sports Medicine team provides leading edge care for athletes and weekend warriors of all ages and abilities. The program is also the official sports medicine provider for several professional and high school sports teams. Today, we'll hear more details about MUSC Health Sports Medicine from Dr. Harris Sloan and Mike Barr. Dr. Sloan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Tell me about this program and what services are provided. We have really the only comprehensive sports medicine program in the area. There's a lot of sports medicine doctors out there who take care of athletes, but I think we offer the only soup to nuts sports medicine service, whether that's concussion management, taking care of athlete nutrition issues or endocrinology issues, injuries that happen to the face or head, all the way through head to toe comprehensive care of the athlete. I think what's unique is we all work together and we work together a lot. And so we have very open lines of communication between the subspecialty groups, which helps tremendously. So if I'm helping getting an athlete back on one of our teams from a concussion or they're seeing one of our doctors for a recent head and neck injury, that communication line is very open and we collaborate to get people back on the field as quickly as possible. We take care of 15 high schools. We take care of three pro teams. We cover major pro tennis events when they come to town. We've got a great group of surgical and non-surgical doctors here at MUSC. We have a fantastic group of rehabilitation specialists. We're the ones on the front line doing the research. And I really don't think there's a better place to go in the region. Talk a little more broadly about the services provided. Our front line consists of our emergency medicine group and the orthopedic group. And within the orthopedic group, we have all of the subspecialties included. So a lot of our athletes are pediatric patients. And so a lot of our pediatric docs participate in care of our athletes. We obviously have the sports medicine group. Within the sports medicine proper, we have the operative and non-operative specialists. So we have numerous non-operative sports medicine specialists within our group. And even the doctors who do orthopedic surgery treat a lot of patients non-operatively. So we're not only doing surgery. And then we have a conglomerate of athletic trainers who work with our athletes on the field who are part of our sports medicine team. We have physical therapists who specialize in rehabilitation of the athlete. And then we have our complementary services outside of the MSK or the musculoskeletal group. And that includes our endocrinology team, our facial and plastics team, our hand surgery team. And so we really, again, just have the most comprehensive and well-rounded group of people taking care of athletes. It's a goal to get people back on the field as quickly as possible. That is a philosophy that really applies in sports medicine because time is of the essence for a lot of these folks. Tell me about that. Patients always want to know, how quickly can I get back? And as a sports medicine doctor, that's really my priority. But I always tell them, my job is to get you back as safely and as quickly as possible. So in that order, because a lot of times athletes feel really good, maybe after a knee surgery, but they just need a little bit more time till they're ready. We have a lot of assessment tools that we use regularly to help us to know when athletes are going to be safe to go back to sports. And obviously, sometimes that's really quick and sometimes it takes several months or a year. And it just depends on the injury and our care is always individualized. Who do you see in the clinic? What's the range of patients that you see over the course of a year and the typical injuries? So I see patients of all ages. I see patients as young as six or seven sometimes and patients who are 86 or 87. And an athlete is a very variable term where an athlete means different things to different people. And so it's not just care of the athlete. I think probably sports medicine is better described as care of the active individual. So what is active for one person or what is an athlete for another person might be very different. What's it like for you to see your patients make a recovery and get back to their favorite sports or activities? We always think about the surgery as being the hardest part, but a lot of times it's really the recovery that is the hardest part of where most of the work goes into. And that's the stuff that the patient does. So seeing the sort of return on their investment during their rehabilitation is always very rewarding. Just name out some of these typical injuries that you see that are common that come through. I see a lot of knee injuries, whether that's a knee ligament injury, like an ACL tear or a MCL tear. I see a lot of meniscus tears. I treat a lot of patients with cartilage injuries or early arthritis. So we do a lot of sort of joint preservation and and joint salvage surgery. I see a lot of shoulder injuries. The common shoulder injuries are usually rotator cuff tears, shoulder dislocation, labral tears, shoulder instability. And then I do see trauma. So I see fractures, whether they're sustained during sport or sustained just from a fall. But I would say the vast majority of my practice probably is comprised of shoulder and knee injuries. 
You mentioned ACL injuries and ACL construction is an area of clinical research for you. Now, this includes tears and re-tears. Tell me about this injury and what about it keeps you looking for more answers through research? We see a lot of ACL patients and we're seeing more and more of them. And I really enjoy taking care of ACL patients. The number of young people who are participating in sports has really increased dramatically over the last couple of decades in the United States. And as a result, we're seeing more and more ACL tears and we're seeing them at a younger age. We know women sustain ACL injuries at a higher rate than the guys. The ACL is one of the most studied things in orthopedics and there's still so much that we really don't know. And there's so many choices, there's so many techniques when it comes to ACL reconstruction and we're way better now than we ever were. But there's still a long way to go, both with treating ACL tears and I think preventing ACL re-tears or preventing ACL tears from happening in the first place. You mentioned that women seem to be at higher risk of ACL injuries. Why is that? The short answer is it's probably multifactorial. We know that there's some neuromuscular things that occur when women land from a jump versus when men land from a jump. And some of them might be that women tend to have a little bit of a wider pelvis. They tend to land with their knee in a little bit more extension. They tend to be a little bit more knock kneed where guys tend to be a little bit more bow-legged. So that definitely predisposes them to having ACL tears. It's been hypothesized that women ACLs are smaller than male ACLs to start with, and so they're more likely to re-tear what's called the notch. So an area in the knee where the ACL sits might be a little bit smaller. So there's a lot of things that have been studied and identified as potential reasons that women have an increased incidence of ACL tears. But the, the short answer is it's probably multifactorial. MUSC Health Sports Medicine actually has a special focus on female athletes. Tell me about some of the unique aspects of women in sports and how MUSC Health is meeting the needs of these female athletes. We have to approach the female athlete very differently than we approach the male athlete because we have to understand some of their neuromuscular factors about their recovery. We have to understand what predisposes them to some different injuries than a lot of the male athletes that we see. We're learning more and more about injury sustained in the female athlete. I think there's still a lot to learn, but they're a fun group of patients to treat. Your team is nationally recognized as innovative leaders in sports medicine. Tell me about this approach and some of the innovations being used. We are always looking at new techniques. We're always studying the best available evidence and utilizing whatever that might be. We published several techniques in the last few years about treating common injuries differently through minimally invasive techniques using new instrumentation to do things through smaller incisions with faster recoveries. One example of that for us has been quadriceps tendon ACL reconstruction. It's a graph that's been around for a long time, but really not been used. And I would say over the last three to four years, the number of quad ACL reconstructions has increased dramatically in the United States as people are recognizing that this is a really good graph to use for ACL reconstruction. It's a graph that I've been using since 2013, 2014. And a lot of the data that has come out of MUSC about quad tendon graphs, we work very closely with some of our colleagues at Emory University to help publish a lot of this research. But it's been really fun to see what's happened as we've published more and more research and then people are picking up on this nationally. We partner with the Clemson Bioengineering Group in terms of some of our basic science and biomechanical research. I'm participating in a study right now looking at ways to preserve bone and cartilage grafts to allow us to transplant these in the patients a little bit easier and overcome some of the hurdles that are associated with uh, bone and cartilage transplantation and, and graft preservation. It's just a really fun thing to investigate, and I think it's very rewarding personally, and I think that at MUSC we're making a big difference in terms of the research that we're doing nationally. Why should someone consider MUSC Health Sports Medicine as their first choice? What is it that sets MUSC Health Sports Medicine apart? Number one, I just think you're going to get evidence-based care, which is so important in 2022. You're not going to get something that doesn't have evidence to support the use when you come to MUSC. We have a team of experts who really sees some of the more complex stuff in the Southeast. We're a tertiary or quaternary referral center. So while we see the sort of worst of the worst in terms of injuries or surgical complications, we also can treat the common and routine injuries very well, and we do it all the time. We have an indications conference, which is one of the, my favorite parts of my job, where we review the images in the surgical plan with other orthopedic surgeons and the radiologists. We do it every Wednesday. We did it this morning. And I think it's a great time to say, hey, I had this really tough case. What would you do in this case? 
And sometimes I talk to my colleagues and I end up changing my plan a little bit or tweaking the way I might do things. And it's very helpful to just have an extra set of eyes sometimes to say, yeah, you're, this is exactly what I would do, or I think you could do it this way, but you could also try and you know, use this anchor, or try this differently. And sometimes it just is really helpful to get another opinion when approaching a difficult, especially for the difficult surgical problems. What's your philosophy when it comes to treating patients? I think number one, if I can treat you without a surgery, I'm going to try. And many, many sports injuries, thankfully, don't require surgery. If we can treat you conservatively or if we think that non-surgical interventions are likely to help, then that's what we try first. And I think the athlete or the patient should be a big part of the decision-making process. So a lot of times during my office visits with patients, I'm presenting them options and I'm explaining the advantages and the disadvantages of each option because there's not always a right or wrong answer. If I can have a patient help to choose their treatment plan, then that's always preferable. And, And my ultimate goal is to get them back on the field or back to their job or back to doing whatever they wanna do as quickly and as safely as possible or as safely and as quickly as possible in that order. There's some times where I think it's my job to present the options to the patient and say, which of these do you want to do? And here's one option and here's another option. And there's other times to say, hey, you know what? We really need to do your ACL reconstruction and here's the reason why. And so it just kind of depends. Again, all of our care is individualized, but at the end of the day, we always try and do what we think is best for our patients. What do you do to optimize your health and live well? I think it's Super important to obviously eat healthy, stay hydrated. You got to find time for yourself. You got to get a good seven or eight hours of sleep. And then whatever physical activity you enjoy, setting aside time to have some physical activity, preferably every day. It can be surfing. It could be bike riding. It could be playing pickleball. And I find joy in doing all those things. I really like riding my bike or skateboarding with my kids. You just try and find some time to set aside to be physically fit. I think it really helps when you come back to work that you're refreshed, invigorated, and ready to take on the challenges of your job and family life. Now let's shift gears and talk about the work MUSC Health Sports Medicine team does as the official sports medicine providers for local teams and events. Mike Barr is a physical therapist and the sports medicine manager at MUSC Health. He joins me with details. Welcome, Mike. Thank you for having me today. Tell me about your role. What are some of your responsibilities as a sports medicine manager here at MUSC Health Sports Medicine. I oversee all of our day-to-day operations for our outreach sports medicine team. So that includes all of our athletic trainers that are stationed in local high schools, as well as with our professional teams, as well as then the event coverage that we take care of, plus the College of Charleston, additional club sports, and club and recreational teams. The other side of it is I deal with the bigger picture of our program of continual growth and how we can bring services of MUSC Health to local communities throughout the Charleston and really the overall state of South Carolina. So how many people are we talking here? How many physicians, physical therapists, other staff members are out there in the community working with these local teams? We currently have 18 athletic trainers that work specifically in the outreach setting. So they are based with our high schools and our professional teams, the colleges, as well as all the recreational teams. And then we have additional sports medicine specific orthopedic surgeons, as well as sports medicine specific primary care sports physicians. So it's a really a big multidisciplinary team that combines for coverage with all of our events. So those 18 individuals you mentioned, the athletic trainers, what are they doing on a day-to-day basis? They are with their teams, their assigned teams, basically all the time. So if a team is practicing, if they're lifting, if they have a game, if it's home, if it's away, it does not matter if it's in Charleston for the Charleston Battery or they're playing in California. Our athletic trainers are there with that team. They are fully embedded and really are members of the individual teams and schools they take care of. You mentioned the Charleston Battery. Tell me about some of the local professional teams that you're working with and just a range of sports that you all are covering. We take care of all the professional sports in the Charleston area. That includes the Charleston Battery, the Charleston River Dogs, which is a professional baseball team, part of the Tampa Bay minor league organization, the South Carolina Stingrays, which is part of the Washington Capitals minor league organization, as well as the WTA tennis event that's over at the new Credit One Charleston Stadium on Daniel Island. We take care of all athletes of all ages, from youth AAU basketball teams to academy soccer and club teams, all the way up through 
adult amateur leagues, rugby teams, roller derby, as well as the College of Charleston and all of their club sports. So our athletic trainers are with every College of Charleston club game. The other day, there was a club hockey game. We have an athletic trainer who's providing support for that team. Why is it so important to build these relationships and offer the MUSC health sports medicine expertise to folks in the community who are participating in sports? There's a common theme out there in the sports world called athletic trainers for all. And that's really having a medical provider on site with every sports team. Injuries happen from minor bumps and bruises, sprains and strains to more major injuries like tears and broken bones, but also the even greater picture of concussions, cardiac issues. And a lot of times there are games going on and the only person out there is a coach who may have first aid or CPR certifications, but they don't have true medical expertise and their job is to focus on coaching. The job of our athletic trainers is to be there and look out for the health and wellness of every athlete on the field doesn't matter if it's that little bump or bruise or if it's a major cardiac event. Our athletic trainers are trained for emergency management as well as then continued management. So if somebody has an injury, they can rehab them on site. They can work with them on taping and splinting to help get them back in the game or facilitate their overall recovery. Tell me about the quality of the trainers, physicians, the whole sports medicine team that's able to take care of these athletes. We pride ourselves on being the most experienced team of athletic trainers around. We have members of our team who've been athletic trainers for 35 plus years, 10 plus years, to those who are a couple years out of school. And so we set up mentor programs where our newer grads, our newer team members have a peer partner or a mentor that's been with our team for a long time, as well as been in the field for a long time. So that way they can work together on how to deal with the athletes and not just be out on their own. They really have that backup person to go to for every little thing that comes up. It also helps our more experienced athletic trainers to have some of those newer people share some of their experiences with them. So they're continually to learn from each other. And that teamwork, it's even though one athletic trainer with one team, they really do work as a comprehensive team together. So that puts us in a different category. In addition to that, our sports med physicians and orthopedic sports med orthopedic surgeons are easily accessible to our athletic trainers. A day doesn't go by where one of our ATs doesn't talk to a physician about an athlete. This is going really well. Just wanted to update you. Or where we've run into a little snag. Here's what's going on. What do you think? And let's put some heads together on how we can get them over these obstacles. For more information on this podcast, check out advance.musehealth.org.